The revolution is here. A movement of people free to live, work, and choose. We won't tell you what to think. We just demand that you think for yourself. This is Kibbe on Liberty. Cody, how's it going? Pretty good. Glad to be here. Thanks for, uh, you You went to heroic efforts to get up here from, from Dallas. And, uh, and I really want to dig into blockchain, Bitcoin, and all sorts of crypto anarchy craziness and you're the man uh <laughs> yeah well we're hoping you're yeah. the man we'll find out <laughs> I, I don't want to be the man <laughs> yeah because <laughs> then they'll take you out but uh yeah but uh this this all started we were hanging out in antigua guatemala after something called the antigua forum um, which is hosted by this this fantastic free market university francisco marroquin mm -hmm. And they have a statue of, of Mises, mm -hmm. and they have the, the Hayek Auditorium. Atlas Shrugged. They've got Atlas all the Shrugged. All stuff in the yeah. And they, they even have uh, my favorite, a, a plaque dedicated to Karl Menger, the founder of the mm -hmm. Austrian School of Economics. Um, so it seemed like a good place to, to hang out and, and discuss some of these ideas. And over much Zacapa, mm -hmm. and, and I think we had a fire going, and we're just hanging out outside, and it was beautiful. And, and we came up with this idea to have this conversation where me, as an economist that likes Hayek, could somehow start to understand you as a coder and, and crypto problem causing person. <laughs> And yeah. vice versa, you know, yeah, there's, yeah. there's a lot to learn from from the economists uh, yeah. in, in our space. So um, let's, since people probably don't know you, uh, mm -hmm. give us a little bit of background on who you are. Yeah. And I'm going to pour some, sure. some Zacapa. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, my, my background, I was uh, I was born in South Texas on, a, on a, the largest ranch in the Americas, the King Ranch. Um, finished high school in San Antonio, got into computers when I was like 10, 11 years old. Um, you know, when you grow up on a ranch, there's not much to do. So, um, my dad brought home a computer and, uh, started, you know, figuring out how that thing worked, picked up the manual and kind of taught myself, um, kind of watched the web you know, kind of get born, I guess, in like 92, 93, I got on real early. I didn't really know, really understand what the web was. None of us did. It was just sort of this new thing with like, you know, text that you could click on to go to different places. Um, so started building that and then got into Unix and Linux, these sort of really hardcore, like, um, uh, structural infrastructure type type uh, systems and I uh, really fell in love with it it was a natural fit for me and then uh, kind of built the web over the la the next you know five six seven years and then into the 2000s had a short stint with the NSA and went on to work with um, kind of in social media doing that kind of stuff that was all the rage back in the or like this the isn't thoughts. like Snowden time is it uh, yeah around that same time yeah right. no I don't know him no I don't know we never had breakfast no I don't you know not, I've never been to Russia I haven't read this book um, <clears throat> but there's a uh, there's a whole um, series there where, um, yeah, I was working on a lot of technologies, hashtags on Twitter before it was, you know, a thing that Twitter even recognized, uh, co-working did a, a conference that was kind of a counter conference to the Ted conference called the bill conference. A lot of conferences in there. Um, as in bill and Ted, bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Yeah. that's kind of tongue in cheek. Yeah. We didn't take ourselves too seriously. Um, that's a whole story in and of itself, but, um, yeah. And then, and then around 2011, 2012, got into Bitcoin, got in, got out, got in, got out. You know, when it went to 13 cents, it was like, oh, my God, 13 cents for one of these things. Like, what are we ever going to, you know, forty four thousand dollars today. Yeah. Um, and so as an engineer and someone who likes to create, I needed a, a diff different platform. So I moved into things like Ethereum um, in a, uh, uh, an area called smart contracts, which are little applications you can deploy onto the blockchain. And we can get into the, the technical stuff later. Um, 2017 um, helped create the ERC 721 standard that we know today as NFTs. I uh, was one of the guys that kind of helped usher that standard in and figure out how it's going to work and all the use cases. Um, yeah. And, that's, and, and we're going to talk about that later. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Pataglia is uh, skeptical, but also strangely I just want to make comics using NFTs. Yeah. Mm. Well, we can do that. Cheers, by the way. Oh, yeah. Very familiar taste we got here. Yeah. This was <laughs> smuggled back from Guatemala, mostly legally. Mm -hmm. Mostly. Mostly, um, so um, so the uh, l l let's and, and we want to get into kind of uh, uh, blockchain crypto 101 mm -hmm. and and I saw you actually give this at the Antigua Forum three two years. or three yeah, three yeah, years ago, yeah. um, and it was pretty useful for me as a as as a non technologist kind of guy. Sure, um, but but to lay the framework, I've um, you know I've been uh, libertarian fighting to to limit the power of government over our lives my 
my entire professional career, and it seems like a thankless job. So I've mm. I've I've tried everything. I've done politics, <laughs> yeah. and now we've totally abandoned politics, and we're focused on on changing the culture and mm -hmm. opinion so that so that people actually understand what this liberty thing is. Mm -hmm. um, but um, particularly in the last two three years, but maybe even going back further, my fallback as a Hayekian is. Well, I'm kind of hoping there's a technological solution to mm -hmm. this, um, and I and I look at at all of these these decentralized platforms as as fundamentally Hayekian in the sense mm -hmm. that they're the, you know they 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 very much tap into local decentralized knowledge, mm -hmm. and and it creates my my professor at George Mason, a guy named Don Lavoy, used to talk about a greater social intelligence. Mm -hmm that came from all these decentralized nodes of people making choices and mm -hmm. acting and, and pursuing their dreams and all that stuff. And so I'm, I'm thinking that the more that um, the central government tries to control technology, the more that there's there's a hack, there's a workaround. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's that's like what it, we were it, talking about. Yeah, it's the old um, quote off of Star Wars, you know, the, the tighter your grasp, you know, like sand, you know, it falls through the hands. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's kind of like that. There's also some some elements of anti-fragility, which is a, a, a term that was coined in the last, I guess, 15 years, um, about these systems, the more you fight them, the stronger they get, they respond. Yeah. And when you look at the system, I'm, when I say system, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, Bitcoin or blockchain or whatever you want to call it. But the system is also the people that, that are sort of surrounding it, protecting it. And so if you get into... This gets into like kind of sci-fi, um, kind of complex systems theory, around um, around how if you take um, once you create order in a certain like a certain substrate, these these different disparate uh, systems, and they start to combine, and you get coordination between them, you get a higher level of order. Well, we're starting, you know, that, and you can you can play that all the way back through the universe. I mean, through big history, you can go back to the the Big Bang, and then you know through. The, the substrates of, of what made the you know, getting into physics and then kind of crawling up through the through the the um, the timelines and getting into you know even government and and you know what it means to be a state with Stalin theory going through all these things and you start seeing this this cooperation leads to a higher level of order and what's really interesting right now is we've seen that these blockchains sort of look like something that's maybe post-human sort of getting above like you know we serve it instead of it serving us the internet for instance serves us. But we serve, we are the ones that created this thing. We can't turn it off now. It's something bigger than, than humans. We could always, we could go back and turn off the internet. I mean, mm -hmm. we can, but these blockchains can't be turned off. And so it's a really, really interesting sort of a, a transition from, you know, where we were with the internet, where you do, you know, you, you, it, it wasn't supposed to be like this. We weren't supposed to have Facebooks and Googles and this, this whole manga uh, thing going on. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Apple. It was Fang for a while now. It's Manga, um, with with uh, Facebook turning into into Meta. Um, yeah, and so you're getting this um, this sort of uh, I guess a, 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 a reimagining of what the internet could or should be or can be now that we have this this gift that Satoshi gave us, which was you know blockchain and how we can yeah. decentralize this stuff and protect it from from these people. I like to say what it what it should have been because there mm -hmm. was an, yeah. an eye among them. Um, there was the first generation um, led by my beloved lyricist of the Grateful Dead, mm -hmm. John Perry Barlow, who, who talked about this, this romantic potential mm -hmm. of democratizing knowledge. And, and I, was, I was very much in that school. And then, you know, uh, going all the way up to, to what the Trudeau and GoFundMe have done to the Canadian truckers, and we're going to get into that yeah. more. Um, it's now sort of a dystopian thing where these, these tools... Um, are tremendously powerful ways to control mm -hmm. people, as the Chinese social credit system has shown us. Yeah. So that the romance has turned into a bit of a dystopian nightmare, or, or getting but, banned on Facebook on yeah. a weekly basis, or you know yeah. that kind of thing, like being put in timeout. Yeah. <laughs> what by by who? Yeah, like yeah. who's that? Who's yeah. that guy that did that? Yeah, Jack to me? Dorsey. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, but um, this so this this is sort of like. Um, I'll call it Internet 2.0, which is is sort of cheapening the mm -hmm. concept yeah. you're talking about. But to to me, it's everything, and, and libertarians and civil libertarians and and people that want to sort of democratize prosperity and knowledge. Like everyone should be excited about this. Yeah. Um, they shouldn't be afraid. They should they should know that this is like the the alternative to tyranny. 
Uh, yeah, and, and it's guys, you know, if you go back and read um, Tim Berners-Lee, what he wrote about the, 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 the web or, you know, HTML and CS, you know, all these different, this, this idea of creating these, these pages, these places where humans can actually go and read and it's not through some cryptic, you know, only Cody can do that kind of stuff and is, and is better. It's like, it's stuff that's, that's easier to use. Um, Jimmy Wales did that with Wikipedia. You know, we saw this kind of stuff, but even Wikipedia is now gatekept by by different people. It's you know? Wikipedia is particularly tragic to me because Jimmy Wales always said this is this is Hayek inspired yeah. project, but now it's been um, hijacked. I guess mm-hmm. is the right word. It's 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 Wikipedia. Yeah, if yeah. you can say it that way. Yeah, yeah. Write that down. I just made that up. That's pretty cool. Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna um, register the domain name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grab it right now. But. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't want to go to Wikipedia, to be honest with you. No, we just got to fix it. Yeah, we just got to fix it. But why, why don't we let let's take a step back because mm-hmm. uh, and and I, I we're going to get into the the outrageously authoritarian martial law declared by um, um, Trudeau. Trudeau. Yeah, I was trying to think of something meaner to call him, but I I won't because this is a family show. <laughs> yeah. It's a family show. But but talk <clears throat> just for people that don't understand mm-hmm. what blockchain is why why is this a revolution um yeah kind of i kind of hit on that a minute ago about it can't be stopped and that's that's a really really big uh piece to it um there's a lot of technological things that it allows for kind of as side effects but really the the um the the biggest hallmark or biggest you know stripe that we have on it right now is is that it's it's unstoppable meaning government it's 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 beyond the jurisdiction of governments if every government conspired together and they wanted to shut down the entire internet that's what it would take right now now think about that shut down the entire internet you've now made a bigger mess of a, of a situation i mean like nothing works anymore like nothing um and even then you still have backup systems you've got guys that have you know ham radios that could basically keep the, the blockchain going it would require two people with you know these little computers that are about this big you know even smaller um, in a closet running and you, and the network still kind of keeps a heartbeat. Um, there's, there's things like that. So the other, the other piece is that it's, um, we say permissionless and permission, permissionless means you don't need permission to use it. You can literally walk up to the blockchain and just use it. Now there's a, there's some technical pieces there. You can't just walk up to it. You have to know how to, there's, but, but we have this thing. We have, um, we've got systems that are pretty resilient now that, that can't be taken down. And so any, anybody from, from Venezuela or Cuba or North Korea can always put a, 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 a transaction onto the blockchain. Um, and, and they are. And, and they are, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because the amount of bandwidth, it, t- it doesn't take like a like broadband. It doesn't take, you know, a, a 200 megabit connection to like send the stuff up there. You need like a ham radio where you can like, you know, that kind of stuff. And you can get these transactions out. And that's what makes it really, really powerful. The second thing or third thing, I guess, is the... Um, the fact that it's immutable. So once a transaction goes through, you can't recall that transaction. You can't undo it. You can't um, you can't pick up the phone and call someone and say, "Hey, someone's you know stole my I, you know I need to do a chargeback like you can with Visa," and that's good and bad. I mean, there's some there's some good things and bad things about that. I think um, you know fraud and those kind of things are always nice to have a, a safety net, and you know those systems are being built. However, um, with Bitcoin as it is now. It's permissionless, so anybody can use it, and it can't be it can't be stopped, and it can't be um, uh, changed. So you can't undo these things. So the idea that like this Trudeau, gov- this Canadian government, you know, their their um, fin track or whatever they call it, you know, they, they they pipe up and say, oh, we're gonna we're gonna outlaw it. And I was like, great, okay, <laughs> stop them. Like you can't. How how do you? you know, we we're talking about prohibition earlier. Right. How, do you, how do you stop people from drinking in their garage? Yeah, I mean, how do you how do you, you you can put a law against that, but like, how do you actually enforce it and stop it? You can't. And in fact, what happens is there's a there's a really cool thing called the Barbra Streisand effect. And if you know if you know how to look for this thing, it's it's you can kind of play history out in front of you. Um, so Barbra Streisand had this uh, huge house in like Malibu or somewhere in the West Coast, and you know, 25 bedrooms, eight car garage, three pools, you know, all this stuff. And uh, this paparazzi photographer on a, in a helicopter was you know going by taking photos of the lifestyles of the rich and famous and he published these things online which you know was legal because if it's outside you know anything outside is public domain and if you want privacy on your own property you need to be the one to prevent people from seeing it so was it ethical yeah it was invasion of privacy like i mean like peeking over your neighbor's fence it's an invasion of privacy like you know don't do but it's but the, the courts are gonna be on your side for for peeping on that and so um she ended up suing this um this this paparazzi photographer 
because she wanted the photos taken down. Well, that caught the news, and then everybody went to go see the photo. She was trying to, so it blew up in her face. I've used this plenty of times yeah, in my yeah. career to get around things. If you just know how, know when to look for the pattern, um, and so today the um, the Canadian government and FinTrack or whatever they call it uh, comes out and says these thirty two addresses are. Um, are are banned, right? Well, dude, everybody that had like a like a little bit of Bitcoin sitting around is like, yeah, I'll throw twenty five bucks at them just to, I mean, just to kind of put the screws to them. And you can't stop me. What's really interesting, what I'm looking for is, you know, we have large, large companies like Coinbase sitting up in 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 um in Canada, and they're operating, you know, with the with the permission of the government to come in and and, and offer these services. And so if somebody in Canada or the U.S. has Bitcoin on these, these centralized uh, services, um, they're the ones that kind of gatekeep what you can do with your Bitcoin. Because it's not your Bitcoin, it's Coinbase's. You just have a kind of a, a claim to it. Um, and so when Coinbase is, they're going to be kind of caught between the users wanting to give money to the truckers, right? Forcing the issue. And their own financial regime in Canada saying, don't allow them to do it. That puts them in a really difficult spot because like coinbase is like oh power to the people and like you know sovereignty and uh, oh well now your, your hand is about to be forced and that's going to be a really it's going to happen i mean the, 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 like i know my guys and i know how they work they're going to force that issue because there's a there's a saying that if it's not your keys it's not your your bitcoin yeah and so coinbase is a is a hosted solution. So kind of like a, it's a bank essentially. They hold your coins for you. You don't get the private key, but you get a nice little email and password and you can log in and then transact on, you know, they, they will transact on your behalf. Well, that also means they can also prevent you from doing things they don't want you to do, much like your bank does when you try to do any number of things. So still centralized. Uh, Coinbase is centralized, yeah. right. Cent Coinbase right. is centralized. No, the last thing is that Coinbase will allow you to withdraw your Bitcoin and put it into your own wallet. And a wallet is basically just a public and private key. It gets pretty technical, but there's a lot of applications you can use, you know, on your phone, which I don't really recommend. You should probably use a computer. You know, you don't want to be depending on how much you have. And if it's like 50 bucks, like okay, phone's probably all right. But if you're like if you have quite a bit of holdings, you don't want to be using your phone for that. So maybe you know get a computer that's um, suitable for that sort of thing. Um, and so yeah, the the idea there is that you buy on Bitcoin. I'm sorry, you buy on Coinbase, and then you would would take that and, and self-custody it. And so now it's yours. No one can stop you from signing those transactions because you actually own the Bitcoin. You control it, not going through Coinbase as an intermediary. So the, uh, and, and the reason um, some of your friends are salivating over this clash is that it's going to push towards more decentralization and, and, yeah. and move to a, a, the next, whatever the next generation is from... Yeah, yeah. And the, you know, and there's from there, Coinbase. Yeah, and there was probably a lot of this kind of works in both ways. There's there was probably a lot of people out there that were like, eh, truckers, bunch of dudes like hanging out, like you know, causing trouble. You know, good for them, kind of, you know, whatever. But with this new Trudeau, this uh, Emergency Powers Act or whatever they 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 enacted, like they're starting to pull a lot of people that were kind of like, eh, on the thing, going like, okay, now you've done it. Yeah. Like it's no longer about the, the vaccine; it's about this like this tyranny. This, I mean, and that's what it is. Or, or police state, where the police make the rules and they get to enforce whatever they want. Like you're really starting to open some some really bad cans cans of worms here, and it's only going to embolden the movement. The Barbara Streisand. I mean, you're gonna, you're going to have people from all over the world saying, "Yeah, you know, send money to Canada because like those guys need it." And you know, the hell with, you know, what the government, what their what their government says, yeah. their organizational yeah. powers. Yeah, it's it's kind of shocking because he's he's basically invoking uh, war powers against uh, the guys that make sure that food gets on the table in Canada. Oh, I, yep. I, I feel like it's a bad look. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm biased because well, it's it's just the old it's the old regime that doesn't that doesn't understand how these things work. And what it's 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 painfully obvious. So if you look at the list, it says like I think there was if I can remember, Bitcoin was like the first one mentioned. And then it was like um, Cardano and like Ethereum Classic and like these, these lists of addresses. And the very last one was Monero. So anybody in crypto that knows anything about crypto, anything about blockchain, knows that Monero is the secu it's the most secure and private blockchain out there, period. I mean, there's Zcash, there's other, other ones out there that promise that. But Monero is like the one that, that anybody that, know, that knows cryptography, like, nope, Monero, double ring signatures are, that is the most, that is the most private so in other words, with Bitcoin, you can see who sent who, how much. On the Monero network, you can't see who has, I mean, 
You can't see how much was being sent between two parties and who those two parties were. So how does the government even begin? I mean, there's not even a ledger to look at. All they did was they provided free advertising for this thing. So if anybody was like on the fence about this and they're like, yeah, I really don't like, you know, I'm a, I'm a billionaire and I have a bunch of money. I'm going Monero. I'm going to send it to him like that. And so I'm clean. There's no way you can track it back to me unless the government comes into my house and, you know, takes my keys, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I mean, geez, like, <laughs> I mean, part of it was, uh, um, the, the, the fascinating trajectory of, of the tyranny in Canada. And, and, and by the way, like, this, this isn't really a Canadian problem. I think our government in the U.S. would love to do the same damn thing to us. And they're, they're, they're trying and they're passing laws and all sorts of stuff that I'm not totally fluent on. But, but you know, it, it started with the, the charade of, of GoFundMe, mm. which claims to be crowdsourced, bottom-up, grassroots, just arbitrarily deciding, you know what? We're not going to let you give to those guys. Yeah, and it's... You know they get to pick winners and losers it's 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 you know and 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 you know companies should have the right to do what they want i mean if, if gofundme wants to do that that's great but now you have if you have a second company pop up you know unfortunately it's going to be like a red and a blue split in this country in this country yeah um but um all, all you know if the government starts to get and starts picking winners and losers and then now you've now you have people going okay well we need something that the government can't control Right. right. So that just, I mean, right. you're just feeding them. You're, you're just accelerating what's already going to, which is fine. I look back at it and go, this is a natural progression because yeah. we have, we now have a new tool. If you try to do this in the, like 10 years ago, right. They would have just like, okay, well freeze the bank accounts. And like, you, you know, you'd have people like mailing money in envelopes or something like that. But now there's this alternative, this giant exit sign from their, from their system. And it says here, here's the workaround. Wow, man. That's a, that's a really empowering piece there. And people are waking up to it. Because, you know, if you watch the Super Bowl, there were like freaking 20 commercials on crypto. Yeah. Right. So it's like the, the Overton window is shifting and people are now even even, you know, uh, bankers that I've talked to are, are starting to like, you know, five years ago, like, is this thing really going to last? They're no longer asking that. They're like, so when should I get in? Like, I mean, this is getting kind of big, isn't it? Like they're starting to realize that this whole Internet fad <laughs> is no longer a fad. Right. Right. It's like. You know, it's getting better every 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 week. We're seeing new and new. You know, every every hour we're seeing new and new developments and progressions. And, and you know, it's like if you try to get online in 1993, the modem was screaming at you. And it was a it was a real bitch to get online. But um, over time, we made it easier. And now you just walk around with your phone, and it like auto connects to Wi-Fi, and like automatically puts the password in, and you're just like on. Yeah. And that's um that's that's where crypto will get you just got to realize we're in the first inning we're in like 1993 and there's like some geeks out there going this is the future and people are going uh that's really slow and like the, the jpegs load like this you know and it's like yeah but like we can make that better and one day we'll get like game of thrones like 4k in our car you know on 4g like you know how far we've come so that's the natural progression of, of technology i mean and it comes quick and and to make another parallel on that um you know if you go back to the early 90s we only had what, 100, you know, uh, maybe a million programmers in the entire world, and half of them weren't even, like, aware of, like, what the internet was? Well, dude, you've got, like, I mean, a stupid amount, like, 250 million developers in the world. Well, maybe not that much, but, I mean, a, a massive amount of developers now. So so the, the amount of work being done and the amount of minds being dedicated to this is 20-fold what it was in 1993. Yeah. Like, so, wow, it's going to come through much faster. So it's like, I mean, living right now and watching this on a day-to-day -day basis you're not having to wait a month for, for progress. It's like poof, poof, happening every day. So when we were hanging out, um, I, I got to bring this back to Hayek. And by the way, mm -hmm. part of, part of watching Kibbe on Liberty is there is a small hardcore group of, of viewers who drink mm -hmm. every time I quote Hayek, which, which is more perhaps than, than I should. But, um, we, um, one of us, I don't remember who, but pulled up this, this cool video of Hayek, he's talking about his book, The Denationalization of Money, and and he totally anticipates Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, a sly roundabout way, yeah, yeah is what yeah. he says. Yeah, he's yeah. like, we're a sly roundabout way. It's like, wow, man, 1984, 83? It's, it's, it, was some, it was something like that, yeah. and, and maybe one of our, Brett, look this up. Do you know what I'm talking about? This is... This is just like Joe Rogan, where Joe Rogan has a guy that looks up stuff <laughs> to make sure that Joe Rogan doesn't misquote yeah. the truth. But it's um, he's like, and, and he's basically talking to uh, uh, Ron Paulers that want to end the Fed and, and, and blockchainers that say, no, we're going to work around this. Because he says, look, 
we're not going to end central banking. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen because the entire system and all the power structures around it feed off of fiat money and, and the way that they manipulate our lives and transfer wealth from the have-nots to the haves and all this stuff that, that we crazy Austrians talk about. Um, there's got to be some crafty way to, mm-hmm. to work around it. Um, did you find it? Do you want the quote? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in 1984, Hayek said presciently, I don't believe we shall ever have a good money again before we take the thing out of the hands of government. That is, we can't take them violently out of the hands of government. All we can do is by some sly roundabout way introduce something they can't stop. I mean, that's... So did, dude, it's Lo- like, Logan, could you hear that? I think you'll be able to hear it. We'll uh, subtitle it. Okay, yeah. we'll subtitle it because it's, it's all it's, it's a, everything. It's like, a, yeah, then that quote like it gives me gives me chills when I read that because I was like, sly roundabout way. It's like yeah. he's like some way to make a ledger that could be controlled but not controlled by the government. If you had like some sort of decentralized peer to peer money system on the computers, but we don't really have an internet yet. So like you know, he's like right there, and it's like just give it time, dude. Let like let the let the computer science guys yeah work on on that problem, and then Satoshi sort of gave us that magical you know formula on how it works, and it's. You know, we're 12 years into it, and it's still working like, like and, planned. And by the way, just to just to <clears throat> give a shout-out to the Austrians, there's a reason that Hayek understood something that hadn't happened yet, because the entire basis of the Austrian school, particularly Karl Menger, mm-hmm. talked, uh, like one of his most important works was the, the spontaneous evolution of money. He mm-hmm. wouldn't have used the word spontaneous, but he was talking about uh, why money matters and how it works, and it, it works because people... Um, see see value in it and it's it's not only a medium of exchange but it's a store of value and eventually um, not just Menger but Mises would talk about uh, commodities like gold be, uh, for the simple reason that they couldn't be manipulated right, by right, government right yeah that's that's a that's a huge piece to, to a lot of a lot of these cryptocurrencies and you go Bitcoin, back yeah. go back to when Nixon closed the gold window they took our gold from us. <laughs> And and we've been working on a hack. Yeah. Like what's okay? What's the, what's the next iteration of this? And I feel like we're at the cusp of that mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. There's a, there's a really great. Uh, so, you know, admittedly, this space is extremely complicated right now. It's it's very complicated technology, um, and there's a lot of. You know, if you go back to, I, I like to reference the late '90s. I, I was a, you know, I was like in the middle of all the dot com boom and bust, and like all the great and bad ideas. And it was really hard to discern good from bad back in the day. I mean, there were people out there that had the tools and the the, the knowledge to to be able to do that. But for the average consumer, it was like really hard to pick. Like, you know, is dogfood.com going to be the big winner? I'm like, okay, or, or oh no, it was going to be books. Oh. Well, why didn't why wouldn't it dog food? I'm like, well, I mean, there's a lot behind that. There's a lot more technical reasons why books at Amazon were won over versus dog food. Um, and in this space, um, it's really there's 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 oh, sixteen thousand different currencies that are out there. Some of them are, are memetic, like Doge or Shiba Inu, or some of these like meme coins that sort of pop up. You know, when there's like a Super Bowl blooper, they pop one up real fast every runs in it's kind of a it's it's like it's it's just fun it's they, they mean nothing it's not a big deal like um if you look at the supply like if you, if you actually look at, at the supply like emission of of doge you'd be like well, well i would never touch that i mean like if you don't like inflation here then like why would you do that but it's fun and people people enjoy it and there's like it, it's it's whatever um then you get to these different platforms that are around um uh, smart contracts actually di- disintermediating a lot of the, the functions of banks like escrows and insurance and these kind of things. Um, you know, if you look at the if you look at insurance, I mean, that's a you know, a lot of money being made off of insurance. Like, if we could somehow come up with a protocol that allowed for us to pool our our risk together and our assets, and then take out the rake, take out the the profit, like we'd all pay lower. And that's what these that's what these blockchain protocols will allow us to create. And you get very very creative with these things, and we're just now seeing it. That's in a in a sort of a subset of, of of blockchain called DeFi or decentralized finance. Yeah, and that's that's where I that's mainly where I, I focus most of my attention. Um, there's a really great analogy um, that I'll give you for um, the the largest smart contracting platform in the world is Ethereum. So if you look at like the the, the king of coins, it's always going to be Bitcoin, or at least it has been. Um, and you know, Bitcoin I think has forty percent of the entire market cap of all cryptocurrencies. So forty percent, like that's 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 a lot. Like that's going to be hard to, to dethrone that person or that that coin. Um, 
Bitcoin is a lot like gold. The reason why it's worth something is that it can't be, you can't flood the market tomorrow. We have like a fixed supply. There's about 19 million that have been created and 21 million will ever be created. And it's on this sort of emission curve that like really teeters out. And I think it's not till 2140. So we have like another 120 years of emissions. But every like three years, it halves. You have a halvening. So it started off with uh, 50, 50 coins per block, and then it went down to 25, 12.5, 6.25, you know, on down. And then pretty soon it'll be just, I mean, tiny amounts. But the price at that, at that time should be a lot higher. So the, the dollar value should follow that curve. So, um, so if you look at like what, you know, people ask, why does why does Bitcoin have value? It's like, well, for the same reason gold has value. It's not because you can use it. I mean, you can use gold in, in, in certain applications and in, in industrial applications, but not for 1500 bucks an ounce. You know, it doesn't, doesn't command that. So we have a, um, uh, so you have this, this, this guarantee that, it, that, that you won't find a giant hunk of, of gold in the ground. You know, that's what, that's what, that's what um, protects gold's value. And actually, if you get down to it, a friend of mine shared this with me, uh, a dear friend of mine named Fred, um, he shared this this idea about um, what really protects the value of gold is the is the actual atomic structure of the atom that you can't create more of them and if you like there's, there's a ceiling to what gold would be worth and that's the, the amount that alchemy comes in where you can actually create gold yeah you can create gold right now but it's like four thousand dollars an ounce so you really shouldn't you should just go buy it and that's what protects the value of it so it's actually on the molecular level and when you get into Bitcoin, um, you have the same sort of thing. There's only 21 million and some some extra numbers after that that will ever be created. Now you'd have to convince a lot of people that are that are holding on to the scarce resource to somehow give up more of this resource, right? Like, and, and that's really hard to do. It's like, hey guys, you want to like do use like you know bring in some like some other material like gold. We're gonna call it gold and just like extend the supply. Like, no, they're gonna protect their investment because that would have their investment if they doubled the supply. I mean, this is like very basic economic principles that we are that that the blockchain community um, is having to learn on the fly because we're a bunch of programmers and hackers that like hang out you know and, and and program all day and learn about complex systems what we didn't do is we didn't go to college to learn about economics we didn't do these deep reads and these like you know all these different philosophies and how they relate and all these kind of things there's a whole community out there this is kind of what we're talking about I'm, I'm guessing both communities and I can speak for my community. Yeah. We, we struggled to meet girls. Uh, so, yeah. per, well, <laughs> e, 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 present company accepted, of course. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's, there's probably a healthy bit of that. If you've ever gone to a, a, a blockchain conference, it's it's pretty, yeah, it smells pretty bad. And, it, yeah. Except that they're probably rich now. Um, so, uh, yeah, getting back to it. So, there's a really great, there's a good analogy there. So Bitcoin is like gold. And if you look at something like Ethereum, what gives it value um, is the fact that it has, it can actually perform a function. It can actually do something, right? Like if you, ha if you have a hunk of gold, what can you do with it? Well, you can protect it, but you really can't do it. It doesn't serve any sort of purpose. So when you look at Ethereum, you say, well, what, you know, it, it has a, per it, it, it will basically allow you to execute these smart contracts, these applications, these decentralized finance, really, really sophisticated um, tooling that's that's on the blockchain, much like oil. The reason why oil has value is you can get plastics out of it, energy to push a car down the road, make tires out of it. You can do all kinds of really great things with it. So it gives it utility, and there's a there's a big difference there, and that's why you see sort of a decoupling sometimes of their of their values. So, for people that aren't into crypto yet, mm -hmm. um. Why? Why should they like? Like they're intimidated, and they've heard all these stories about there, there's nothing there. I mean, you mm -hmm. just you just address this issue, but um, why? Why should people do this? And and maybe it has something to do with what the government's doing to the currency that they hold. Yeah, I mean, just turn it around. I usually just for one, I don't have time to to, to like sit in line at the grocery store and like argue with somebody about this stuff. So I kind of keep quiet. So I don't wear like a Bitcoin shirt, or I don't try to. I don't advertise this stuff because I really need to be working on solving problems, not trying to educate one-offs, you know, that I right. bump into at the grocery store. Um, but the, the way I, I, pref I would like to see people do it is turn it around on them. So like, why are you holding the dollar? I mean, they're, like they're printing up more of that stuff. Don't you realize that? Like their, their emission, like they're just, they're spewing out more dollars. You're looking at effectively 15%, right? So like if you held, if you held, I mean, if your house was declining by 15% per year, every one of those people would tell you, sell it. Like get out from underneath that asset. That's a bad asset to hold on to. It's depreciating, right? I mean, yeah, you're living in it, so it gives you gives you, you know, a place to live. Um, 
but like that's not a very good investment. So you, why would you want to hold like right now? I mean, I think everybody listening to this would agree. You don't want to hold on to cash right now. You want assets. You want land. You want gold. You want why, why not Bitcoin? I mean, it has all the same properties of gold, store value, all this kind of stuff. But like it's actually got some extra extra functionality. You can like, move it around pretty easy. You don't have to like dig a hole in your backyard. And it's hard it to steal it. It's, it's it's hard to say if you know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, if you if you you know leave your laptop unlocked at a Starbucks, like yeah, someone's gonna come by and there's that possibility. Um, but keeping the stuff safe, it's you know it's a it's a a number about this long that you gotta make sure no one sees. Write that on the I you know I tell people all the time, write it down on a piece of paper, hide it somewhere really obscure in your house. That's about as good as you can get. Might want to put another backup copy somewhere else also, but yeah, you know, yeah. protect the paper. But that's. Um I mean, if there's this um, skepticism right now, and in, in, in large part because of like volatility. Compared to what? Yeah, compared to compared what? Compared to what? Just fire, fire back with that when they say, "Well, it's so volatile." Compared to what? I mean, look at your stock market. I mean, it went, you know, you had a, you had these same retraces, and sometimes they're coupled, and they just go, "Oh, well, you know, they're coupled for a while," and then they one of them will shoot off in a different direction. It's like, well, which one? Or, or zoom out. Tell them to zoom out on the graph. Well, look, it's down from that. It's like, yeah, but it's up, you know, fifty thousand percent since two thousand twelve. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I'll play that game all day long. It's also the window. Like the the skeptics will will take a slice of, of volatility that doesn't show the trend from. And and by the way, I'm pissed that you were into Bitcoin when it was 15 cents. I sold a lot of it. Like I mean, I bought it for eight and sold it for 12 and bought it for 13 and sold it for you know 15. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't like. You should have stuck. I do. I should have. Yeah. The long game. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I did. You know. So maybe you know. Terry, Terry, and I still. <laughs> Theoretically, own a wallet that we bought Don't. when we were drunk Don't. in uh, in um, um, Prague, because we were at uh, we were at the Institute for uh, Crypto Anarchy, mm-hmm. and it was the first time I was able to buy uh, a beer with, with, crypto. with yeah. crypto, and I thought yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. So we probably put like forty bucks on. This is long enough ago that this would be real money. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where that is. Yeah, there was a there was a, a like a hacker den up in Vancouver. It was like in a basement. It was really cool. They had all, they had all kinds of. It was like a bunch of crypto frat dudes hanging out. Um, and I was up in Vancouver hanging out with these guys doing the bill conference. And um, uh, we went to their their layer and stuff. And there's like a there's a uh, uh, beer vending machine. It had a QR code with with. So if you sent money to this like if you sent Bitcoin to this QR code, um, it would spit out a a beer. Kind of nice, right? It was kind yeah. of you know it's like like 12 minutes for it to actually like for the transaction to like get through and like finally you get your beer so it wasn't very um usable or like you know fast but it, it did work and well i thought it was pretty cool so i sent a photo of it to like a bunch of my, my homies back in dallas when i was living there i sent them the, the, the qr code they all hammered the qr code for the beer like we were having beer spitting out every five minutes i was like this is awesome stuff like that you know that was that was kind of like that was the experience we had yeah. like I, I it was a total pain in the ass to actually ultimately mm-hmm. pay for the beer but i thought it was cool do you remember trying to listen to like radio on the internet back in like 95 yeah like, it sort of worked and it was really cool because it was like i'm listening to a radio station like an fm radio station in, you know in france but it, like would chop out every two minutes and it's like why don't you just use the regular terrestrial fm but things get better and then yeah. they things get better yeah. it, it turns out so I'll, i want to take a break and and we're we're thinking for this that we're going to do like a mega two episode version of this because I want to start applying this to all of the problems of, of censorship and, and we've we've touched on authoritarianism yeah. and how how we <clears throat> hack the government so that we have freedom again. So stay tuned for that. We're yeah. we're going to get through this whole bottle before we're done and. Uh, uh, is such a clumsy close. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that show, make sure that you like and subscribe. Click the little bell so that you get notifications. And if you consume this via podcast, go wherever you want to go. We're everywhere. Kibbe on Liberty, the revolution starts now.